My name is Barry McDonough. I'm the author of DARE and the creator of the best-selling anxiety treatment program, Panic Away. I have taught everyone from top CEOs and celebrities to police officers, soldiers, and stay-at-home moms on how to end their anxiety and panic attacks fast. In the past 10 years, the Panic Away program has touched over 150,000 lives in 32 countries worldwide. My goal is to now help you to no longer let anxiety define who you are and what you are capable of. If you are ready to take action, I am ready to help you every step of the way. Today, I will give you methods for you to end anxiety attacks. The one move for driving anxiety. One of the more common questions I'm asked is how to apply the one move while driving a car. People have many different fears in this area, ranging from fear of being caught in traffic to crossing waterway bridges. Often the anxiety stems from a fear of being trapped in the vehicle in gridlock traffic or losing control of the vehicle and maybe causing a collision. I'm shortly going to show you how to apply the one move to driving anxiety, but before I do, I want to explain a couple of things. The first is that you need to break this challenge down into little steps so you build your confidence up gradually. Now that applies to all situations you want to end your anxiety in. All the small steps have to include some level of anxiety or else you probably aren't pushing yourself far enough. The other thing to mention about driving anxiety is that most people work themselves up into a state of high anxiety even before they've pulled out of the driveway. They imagine scenes of causing 10 car collisions on the highway because they freaked out and hit another vehicle. If you have such concerns, the first thing you need to do is review your driving history. Have you been a reckless driver in the past? Do you have a history of bad driving? Most phobic drivers actually have clean driving records and have never even been in a minor road incident. Anxious drivers are not a deadly hazard on the road. In fact, they can be a lot more vigilant than many ordinary drivers who, after a long day in the office, are virtually asleep at the wheel. The second major concern of most phobic drivers is the fear of being trapped in the car in some manner. Now, by this I mean being caught in traffic on a busy three-lane highway or on a long bridge or even stopped at lights. When allowed to, your mind will run away with this fear and imagine all kinds of deadly scenarios where you feel cornered or trapped in your vehicle with no assistance available should you experience a panic attack. The important thing here is to curb these what-if fears before they do take root. By offering yourself viable solutions to any of these scenarios and not letting your mind trick you into believing that there is a trap. I mean, give it some thought. Are there really any situations, such as the ones described, where you're truly trapped with no means of escape? You know, no, of course there aren't. Eventually traffic always moves. It doesn't remain gridlocked forever. There's a flow and there's always an exit. Now, this may mean figuring out what that exit is for you, but never let these what-if thoughts corner you into th to thinking that there is no escape. It's very common for a person with driving anxiety to fear passing a certain distance away from their safe zone, usually their home. The anxious what-if thought is, well, you know, what if I go too far and have a panic attack and then I can't get back? This fear applies to all travel, in fact, any travel that away from your home. What you have to understand is that distance is really irrelevant. How far you go isn't important. It's how you go that is. How you are handling each and every wave of anxiety that manifests. This is a psychological issue going on within you your own mind and your own body and it doesn't matter whether you're sitting on your front porch or on a desert, deserted island. It's always about your reaction and nothing to do with distance from an imagined safe zone. So don't focus on the distance, focus on your response. 
I appreciate that, you know, in the beginning, you still have to prove this to yourself with experience. So if driving a certain distance from home is a concern, then break it down, as I said, into small steps. Start by determining what your safe zone in your mind is, and then begin by pushing yourself to drive just outside of that safe zone. That might be five, 10, 50 miles from your home, whatever it is for you. When you get there, part of you will then feel like, great, I did it, now let's rush back home in case something bad happens. But instead, I want you to just stop the car and stay there for a while. So stay there seated in your car until you even get a bit bored. Now this is really important to do because it means you are pushing that boundary out and then keeping it out. You own that new distance now and your world has gotten this bit bigger along with your confidence. Now you start to appreciate that the distance you go is an illusion. The only thing that matters is how you are responding to the waves of anxiety wherever you find yourself. I'm going to now show you a live example of how to apply the one move to driving. So this is the one move for driving and I'm going to give you a live example of how to apply the one move when you're driving in your car. Remember, when you're tackling a situation like this, any situation that makes you anxious, expect to be anxious. You know, don't get upset or frustrated when the anxiety arises. It's when the anxiety is present that you learn. And remember, when applying the one move, it's not about not feeling anxious. It's about doing the thing with the anxiety present. It's about being comfortable with your anxious discomfort. So we're going to drive and I'm going to show you how to apply the one move on the road. Okay, so let's go. So here we are applying the one move while driving. And remember, as soon as you begin, you're going to have those anxious what if thoughts manifest. What if I drive too far and have a panic attack? What if I get stuck in traffic and start to feel very anxious and nobody can help me? And this is when you begin the one move. I want you to diffuse those anxious what if thoughts with a strong response. So what you would say is a so what, whatever type response to those anxious thoughts. Then as you drive along, expect the anxiety to be ever present. So you're going to accept and allow it. Stage two, you're going to accept two. You're going to accept and allow the anxious sensations as they manifest. And repeat that phrase to yourself. I accept and allow this anxious sensation. I accept and allow this anxious thought. What that will do is it'll help the anxiety settle with you. You're not resisting it. You're not fighting it. Then if you feel the anxiety peaking, into what's known as a panic attack and the sensations are getting too intense, I want you to demand more. You know, demand more of the anxious sensations. If it's a pounding heart or a tight chest, really bring it on so that it shatters that illusion that the anxiety is holding over you. And you'll prove to yourself how capable you are of driving even with those anxious sensations. And then the fourth step, bring yourself back to the present moment and really engage with the activity you're doing, which is driving. So pay attention, really feel the steering wheel under your fingers, listen to the sights and sounds and really just get absorbed into the activity of driving. If you get to a point where you've gone past your comfort zone, I want you to pull over like this and stop and stay in the car. So you've reached, let's say for example, your comfort zone is five miles and you've driven six or seven miles. Stop and stay there and really own this distance that you've gained because the important thing is not to turn around and run straight back home because then you're still running from the anxiety. Push past your comfort zone and really own it because that pushes out your comfort zone and really challenges what this idea of, of a safe zone is. The important thing about staying here is that it just builds up your confidence that you can really, you know, challenge yourself like this and that you can really go further distances than you would have thought. Then when you're ready, and ideally after you've actually gotten a little bit bored, you're going to continue on driving. So um, let's continue on. In this case, it might mean just going back home then. You know, as I said, start with small steps and then build up from there. So let's keep going. Now remember, Doing the one move, it kind of loops around. So you keep doing it every time you feel that wave of anxiety become present. And then always bringing yourself back to the activity, to the present moment. And what will happen is, is that you'll actually be very comfortable driving with the anxious discomfort to the point where you won't start to notice it anymore. 
and that's key that's when the anxiety starts to really decrease and when you start to feel comfortable driving any distances so this has been the one move driving i hope it helped